here's a quick overview of the sea turtle face recognition system. Um, this is version 27, um, which is the, the working version um, for you to use and has some comments in it. So um, it should have this title, uh, sea turtle face Re detection, talk about face detection versus recognition and running on a GPU. So that's, look, you look for those comments to know you have the right version. We've had some problems with Kaggle. Um, not displaying the most up-to-date version. Also, you should make sure you run this with a GPU in uh, running. You have about 24 hours of GPU time. So go in the menu, go to Accelerator, and make sure your GPU is turned on. It'll run much, much faster. Okay, this uh, you can just run this to make sure it's running. You should also be connected up to the data, so you should be seeing the sea turtle data <coughs> over here uh, in there. Um, and then again, normal libraries we import here. Um, we bring in the, the data into a working or a, a uh, data frame called DF labels. We then are going to build off of that. Now, um, there are some images of multiple turtles in them, and we're getting rid of those. So we end up with uh, 1,934 images. <clears throat> this is how we delete the duplicates. Um, we can also run this without this by default. If this is in place, we'll run it on all the images. If you want to run it a little faster, or whatever, you can run it on like just the 500, first 500 images, something like that. We also don't do a right now. I'm not doing any sort of uh, train test split. We should probably should do that in the future. But and this is the image size we're going to set uh, for this. Uh, talks about some bounding box issues uh, or things. So you can either talk about um, setting up a bounding box with the corners, upper left, lower right, or figuring out the center and then the width and the length. So there's are two different formats. And then also units, sometimes you can specify it in ex absolute pixels, and otherwise you, just, you can specify it in percent of the whole image. There's a common method called the YOLO kind of method, which is a center sized percent. So it says um, where the center of the box is and then uh, the percent uh, width and length the percent is uh, each direction for that. Um, so we are going to read in all those YOLO uh, things from the labels here. We create this new data frame. We append it to the other size. We're also going to resize all the images. Uh, to 224 by 224, we resize them once, so then we don't do that. And that'll store them in this other directory, a working directory. Uh, or they're not there because I haven't run it yet, but they would store them all in there uh, in this folder called image 224. Um, so this this is going to take a while to run, um, in a couple minutes, uh, and but it should resize all the images uh, here. We're also going to compute uh, new bounding boxes with absolute pixels with the resized images of that. So we ended up with this data frame all, which is all the information we have uh, here uh, for this. And we can use the YOLO image um, values and the resized images. One thing nice about the YOLO stuff, since it's a percent of the images, it doesn't have to be uh, recalculated when we resize the images. Um, now we just have some um, little functions we use, some more functions for displaying images. And now we're just going to display some sample images, show that we have the turtles there, and then we're going to display some images with the bounding boxes, both the original and the resized ones uh, here. So we can see that. Uh, now we set up the CNN. Um, this is where we set up our uh, reader to train these in. Um, so right now we are predicting, we're taking, we're reading in and looking at each file name as input, and then we're predicting out the YOLO uh, values. You could also change this to predict the resized uh, coordinates, uh, left, right, uh, lower, upper left, right, and lower uh, left, right, if you wanted uh, to try something else. Um, we do normal. Um, learning uh, rate reduction, stuff like early stop being involved. And here we set up the network. Right now I'm just using BGGNet. And you can, again, try different nets or build your own network here. Um, uh, for the pre-trained network, we also put in, I put in three layers of dense networks afterwards. And again, you could try different ones. You could try less uh, of that. Uh, for the final output, this is the final output. And I've tried different things, and it seems like linear works actually best. Uh, so we're just predicting four numbers using a linear output uh, there. And then it might give you some errors as far as mod um, 
but these are just warnings uh, with the GPU and making it fast uh, here. So, um, and then you can, this actually trains it uh, for 100 epochs uh, here, and you should be watching the loss. It should start pretty high, or it should start uh, higher and then go down, and then it should get very low. And this is a good measurement of how accurate a model is. So if you want to compare one model to another, just compare the loss. The model with the lowest loss is doing the best uh, here. Uh, we can also display the training curves. Now again, we're not doing the a validation set with this right now. I haven't been able to set that up. Um, but um, we do, we also are going to predict the results, uh, use the prediction. So this is um, uh, an image. You can see there's a blue uh, box around this turtle. That's what, which the original image, and then the yellow one was what it actually learned or predicted here. Same here, there's a blue box uh, behind and a yellow box in front. To it. So it's doing a pretty good job of predicting that. Um, so again, feel free to change this uh, code. If you want to do people face recognition, uh, you should let me know and we should, uh, I don't have a data set set up for that, but we could possibly set one up.